let's talk about the accident with the Costa Concordia. What's your version of events? What happened? Well, let's say that uh, uh, it was a normal practice to perform the salute to the island. And um, that particular night, the, uh, the minimum safe distance plummeted from shore side was uh, one kilometer from the island. And uh, simply like that, it was uh, you know, a, a very easy passage to perform. Because if you can imagine that in uh, North Europe, all uh, the officers, the calling officers, they are certified to put the navigation in narrow water than that one. Anybody is uh, able to do that uh, maneuver, let's say that passage. Mm -hmm. And um, that night I went to the bridge five minutes, six minutes before, because it was only my intention to salute to the island, to blow the whistle, nothing more. Mm -hmm. And um, I realized that the officer was uh, still uh, performing the navigation in uh, with the computer mode, but with the autopilot. And um, it was a standing order that uh, for me, that each time you are, let's say, navigating uh, close to the land or in presence of a traffic, it's better to switch on manual mode in order that you can have a better control of your ship. And he just said, okay, I do that. And he went to steer the ship from manual to, to from autopilot to manual mode. And he was supposed only to keep the ship on course, nothing more. And because I had some guests on the bridge, I was just talking with them. And all of a sudden, the guy said to me, uh, Captain, you are steering on course to 90 in the, uh, with the intention to passing the command to me. And as before, I was uh, ordering to him just for confirmation to keep uh, the navigation at 0 0.5 nautical miles from shore, that means one kilometer from land. He didn't uh, say a word, and I realized that the ship was off course, off of the planet course. And uh, I realized some white foam in the dark, and I realized the presence of the shallow water in front of me. And uh, as soon as I was uh, realizing the danger that was straight ahead, ahead of the, my ship, I was performing and uh, avoiding maneuver to avoid the frontal impact, and I did it. And um, I went with the rudder arc to starboard, that means that I was altering the course on the starboard. And in order to avoid, uh, because the, when you drive the ship, you, it is like, a, you know, it, the ship turns on the aft, because the rudders are placed on the aft. In order to reduce the swinging of the stern towards the rocks, I was ordering uh, the rudders to be placed at the port soon after that I was avoiding with the bow of the rocks. And it appears, it's not me that I'm saying that, that uh, the helmsman uh, he was uh, not uh, following my order and he went with, he was keeping on uh, the rudder on the starboard. And this is the reason why uh, we, the swinging, not the gliding of the stern went through the rocks. Otherwise, even at the very last moment, I would have been able to, to avoid this impact. Now, there are uh, many associations that they have uh, used a simulator in which they took all the data of the ship, they built up the island and everything, and they realized that in case the, the Asman would ever follow it, uh, my order in my last uh, disparate tentative to avoid the rocks, it appears that the ship would have passed safely at a minimum distance of at least 15 meters. It's too short, I know, but did, <laughs> even one meter would have been enough. And uh, that's it. Um, I believe that today uh, uh, the, the market is requiring 
a night number of officers. And the careers, I'm not blaming nobody. This is simply my uh, uh, examination, the lesson to be learned of this accident. And uh, everybody must have, must, I believe they have to serve for more time in their rank because the promotion, they are building, they are moving up on their career too fast. And no one of the bridge team uh, said a word in the, in, in the, because they have to do that. It's captain, we are already, of course, we are already at this minimum distance. Be aware that uh, I was turning late or whatever, and be aware that we have rocks ahead. It's not a professional way to just to pass the command and say, uh, 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 now, okay, I give you the con and you take the con. I mean, uh, there are many, many, many reasons why this accident took place. I'm not blaming nobody because I don't like the blaming culture. You know, for more than one year, I keep silent. I am, you know, I like that this uh, process will be held in court. But as long as everybody, they were trying to speculate on this uh, accident, because since the beginning, no one was uh, telling this story the proper way okay. since okay. the beginning. Why do you feel the need to explain what happened to our viewers? It's not that I feel the need. I mean, I believe that since as this, uh, uh, this is, uh, uh, um, I believe that this is normal because after I've been very tough as a man, I believe. Because for almost two years I am keeping silent, you know, you know, because to me it doesn't make sense to uh, replay or to 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 you know. To me uh, now I like that people slowly, slowly they will build up uh, um, uh, in their mind exactly which were the problem and why some choice were executed were done that night and all the reason why I was handling the emergency that night in that way you know and during the interview you will make to me direct questions and I can give you direct answer okay people blame you for abandoning your ship while a lot of passengers were still on board why did you abandon your ship yeah. Uh, whenever you abandon something, is uh, something that you have uh, the intention to do that. As everybody can see, and in this case, I understand the power that the media they have. They can make a brainwash to the people. And even if the ship was not really sinking, even in an upright position, even if the ship now is completely capsized on one side, and considering the fact that I was leaving, um, I may use this word so we can avoid any kind of a misunderstanding, I was affected by gravity at the very last moment that the ship was capsizing on the starboard side. Um, I have witnesses that uh, I was forced to go out of the ship together with the second in command of the ship. We have also a second captain on board the ship. It was 15.15 meters far from me. And uh, the ship was tilting over, as a matter of fact, it's still there in that position. And uh, it's not that soon after the accident I went away or after one hour, no. I was exactly there on the, on the vital point where we were handling the emergency. And all of a sudden, I hear, heard a crash of all the windows. And you can imagine that due to the crashes of these windows, a lot of water was entering inside that side and the ship was tilting over one side all of a sudden. And um, uh, there was a lifeboat that was uh, almost... Uh, the trumpet in below the two extended arms that are used to lower the lifeboat. Because uh, I was arranging a kind of tender operation in order to be sure to evacuate all the passengers. 
I never went on the lifeboat that was lowered to the from the ship to sea. I have um, been affected by the gravity, and I was able to uh, avoid that. The last lifeboat that was coming from shore to the ship was remaining. Uh, uh, under the gravity of the ship and I was maneuvering that boat out of the side of the ship that was soon after collapsing and was sinking, mm -hmm. as you can see. Mm -hmm. I will uh, uh, give you later some pictures in order that you can have a clear idea of this. But, but was, so, it a, was it the right decision to abandon the ship? No, uh, uh, maybe I don't make myself clear. Uh, it's so difficult to understand that uh, if you fell on a motor motorcycle and uh, somebody says to you that 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 you are uh, are falling or you are abandoning your motorcycle is clear i would really appreciate if we can start to 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 to, to understand that i never was abandoning the ship never never and um, today I don't know, we have, uh, we do not have a lot of uh, maritime uh, uh, background experience because everybody would have been, would be in a position to understand that there is a difference. If you go overboard or if the ship is uh, tilting over one side and your floor become a wall where you are, you don't have other option. Okay. The public opinion is against you in the Netherlands. Are you a victim of all the publicity? Uh, um, if uh, I understand this, and I don't blame nobody, I blame uh, 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 those that uh, since the beginning they were sidetracking, the uh, deceiving the public opinion from understanding which was and why some decisions were taken that night. There are many things, otherwise I would never accept to have a public trial because I, I know that this is the only way to explain exactly what was going on that night. And I would do that in front of the world because I'm, you know, uh, I don't like that the process will be broadcast, but many journalists are uh, allowed inside, and they can see it. They can have uh, their own idea after they, they hear what I have. They, they can hear what I have to say to them. What would you like to say to the Dutch passengers? That um, my commitment is uh, 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 to help to find out the truth. You know. I'm accepting my responsibility since the beginning as a captain. But there are many other things that because after two years from this accident, still people didn't have a chance to understand why what was going that night. As you understand, there are many interests involved in this, and I do understand that. But um, we have to learn from this accident, and the industry is already uh, took advantage of that in terms of uh, a new bridge team procedures, because considering the elevated number of ships that are on the market, so we are uh, now uh, in, uh, educating the officer with, with different standards in order that they can uh, you know, execute navigation in the safest way. So we understand that uh, uh, a cruise ship, uh, uh, you know, you cannot uh, uh, um, even consider that you can count, you can count almost 5,000 passengers in 30 minutes and then abandon the ship. Mm. So there is uh, uh, some uh, uh, vital issues that we have to consider in this, but, uh, and we have to learn from this. But do you say sorry? I said that since the beginning to everybody, and uh, still I don't understand why uh, no one uh, uh, um, 
is uh, ready to accept that if there is a person that feels sorry in this accident, it's me. No one can uh, 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 understand can, if you are not a captain. No one that is not in my shoes can even imagine what is going on inside me. And you see how the media can brainwash people, that they can let you appear a person that is completely different from what you are. So thanks to you, a lot of people survived. Thanks to uh, 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 the Anala, and uh, no, thanks to, 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 it was an accident. Soon after the accident, you have to assess the damage, the extension of the damage. Because uh, if you overreact and you decide to abandon the ship and the ship, instead of uh, sinking, remains floating, you imagine that it's not an easy decision, the one that you have to say to a community of more than 4,000 passengers, you just leave the ship and then uh, later on we will see. Because still, during the abandoning process of the ship, you can provoke casualty. So it's a difficult decision that you have to be sure that the ship will sink. It's not uh, you know, an easy thing to, to assess. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, you need, uh, uh, with the technical advisor, that you need a shore to, 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 to have a consultant, and you need uh, more than one hour to understand whether or not you have to leave the ship. Now, uh, uh, the ship that we have, uh, we carry 5,000 passengers on board. And uh, uh, we have to understand the survivability of a ship after an accident. Things are different if the community on board is only 300, 500 or 1,000 persons. And in that case, let's say you may have time for counting people. But you have to understand that uh, this was a completely different scenario. And you have to adapt the scenario to the... Uh, 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 to the condition, to the morphology of the land, the vicinity of the land, whether or not the ship is drifting to shore. Okay. Do not uh, stop the ship by using the anchor and, uh, and let the ship to sink in the deepest water. If you imagine that uh, we have a computer, the NAPA computer, that is uh, um, um, vital for the government to assess no, it is a decisional support, and if you consider that, that computer failed to operate completely okay. because of the blackout, if you consider now the new regulations are coming up, and that that dot computer that is vital for the safety of the ship, because you don't have a magic ball that you somebody tells you whether or not you have to abandon the ship, but it's not easy decision to take in that moment. And uh, today, after that, they, they were learning from the accident. They were learning from the accident. Now they have uh, ordered to keep the, that computer permanently connected without the okay. socket that is removable to the batteries, so you know that you can always have your data available for making assessments. So, okay, but but Mrs. Catino, did you make any mistake that night? Uh, uh, there are things that can be improved, of course. The mistake was uh, uh, to utilize. Uh, the first officer and all the people of the bridge team according the rule and the rank that they should that they are paid for to be covered everybody on board has a position and that was not really a maneuver that was was saying to you was a passage the, my mistake that I was re, re, relaying on people that they are paid to perform that job mm -hmm. and it's not me that I'm saying that is the black box that thanks to God was possible to re to recover but the original the the real black box was not working and because the ship was not fully submerged and is as you can still see here half part of the ship is dry one computer was taken from from the wheelhouse and was uh, uh, brought ashore, and then it was possible to recover all the data of the navigation. And from that, we can learn now, and we can understand exactly, because many people, they were just making a statement, and they were confident that the truth would never come out, okay. because everybody thought that the black box was, uh, 
not possible to utilize. Do you think you will be punished by the court? No, I, I, I think that you can punish a, 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 a child, no? I am a man. I, I don't think it's the proper word to be used, punishment. Uh, you punish somebody that is doing something wrong. If you kill somebody, here we have... Uh, uh, I believe that the court, and I am confident that the court is interested in assessing, in a fine, and to make homage, to pay tribute to all those people that they died. We have to make this... Uh, 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 we are uh, compelled to find out exactly what was going on that night. And that this is a precious duty of this court, and I'm confident that they will do that. Okay, Mrs. Scatino, thank you very much for joining our program. It's been a pleasure for me.